uh, Michael Rubin, Alameda County. Uh, my, my question is, uh, could you give me some idea of what your top issue or issues, like top three or top one, or some, some notion of the ideas that you intend to highlight during your campaign? Yes, um, looking for potentials, um, obviously we need some reforms that are going to make the process more fair, that are going to get multiple, can uh, multiple parties into play. Um, I totally support proportional representation. I, I think if we could get only one thing accomplished, you know, that, that would be the most important thing to do. Um, and, and we need to get a legislative uh, you know, buy-in to that. Um, but what I'm looking for is how can I use this office to do two things. One is um, make the process more fair, but, but also um, there's, there's a lot of economic concerns right now, and I'm looking at how the office interacts with the economy and how we can, we can repair the damage that's done to both the economy and the environment. So those, those two aspects. Um, for instance, uh, I've been talking about uh, banning frack, you know, using, using the uh, stamp that the Secretary of State has to initiate business licensing and revoke licenses that way. So, so getting rid of frack from that um, you know, I'd be proactive with that office instead of uh, just responding to what the, legislators, the legislature is putting onto the office. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the Secretary of State's office just in the last uh, in the last term has grown from 300 to 500 people, and that seems to be just responding to new tasks that are being created by the legislature. Um, and and I, I don't know if any of that is addressing you know the pressing concerns of we don't have enough jobs in this, in this country, we don't have enough jobs in this state. Um, you know what? What can the Secretary of State do about getting out of you know the obstacles of job creation, and and what can the Secretary of State do that makes sure these new jobs we're creating are actually going to you know be kinder to our environment? Um, also, um, I've been talking about the, the Fukushima issue because it's it's toys that have a potential impact to our economy. Uh, you know, if, if we're getting a degraded environment, uh, you no know, longer entire coastline potentially. And, and that's happening right now. I mean, those contractors in Japan are <laughs> fixing the transfer these rods that has been done before. And they don't have a good track record. So, um, you know, that, that's what I'm looking at. How, how the office can be used to uh, interface with the economy and environmental protection. Thank you. Thanks, Zoe. David, you answered part of my question fracking and trying to get a handle on corporate um, interests in the state. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about ideas you have to require all corporations that file with the Secretary of State in terms of environmental audits or other um, sort of requirements that you might impose on them? Yes, well, I think the main thing is transparency. Um, uh, I've been witnessing some dynamics where there are already um, requirements put upon uh, processes like the impact reports and uh, with the planning processes. Um, I think it needs to be transparent and there needs to be more opportunity for public comment because what I'm noticing is when uh, these things are going through the processes, they really clamp down on the public comment portion. Um, you only get like two minutes or something. And, and to me, that, that's where it's really stifled. It's not like a democratic open process. Um, so it, even with uh, the Plan Bay area that just happened, um, you know, I, I didn't meet too many people who actually read through the entire document. And there's a lot of political discussions that have happened with it. And it's almost impossible to know if there's adequate environmental review on it or not. And then when people are commenting, they you know they get this little crumb of comment on. So I don't I don't think the um, public discussion process in general is adequate enough. And it's, it's too it comes across as just uh, too fascist. Um, you know when I go to public meetings even at a county level and you get this little two minute time and I I understand it's a it's a cost and time efficiency aspect, but you have to have adequate discussion and it has to be free discussion. 
So that's what I would emphasize is I would, I would just encourage, uh, you know, if a community has a concern, uh, they, they need to have an open, adequate discussion and, and forget about the two new rules. So. Thank you. So David, thanks first for stepping forward. Uh, a couple of questions, one internal, one kind of broader external. Uh, it was brought to my attention, first on the internal side, that early in your campaign, you had posted some stuff uh, from an internal party fight in one of our counties. And um, I think some, some folks wonder whether that's really appropriate or necessary for a statewide candidate to be getting into our internal stuff. So kind of going forward, is that still on your side? And are you going to continue to publish those sort of things? Um, on the issue-related side, if you ran into an average voter who may have voted for the top two system, and you wanted to convince them that our approach for proportional representation is better, what would you say to them? Or if you were really, you know, a TV debate or something, how would you spin why the top two wasn't the right reform and why the proportional representation would be so? Thanks. Sure. Um, and just to remind me, um, I've been kind of confrontational with the uh, with Twitter posting uh, in the spirit of WikiLeaks. Um, so, so I, I have sort of tended to err on the side of transparency. But um, can you tell me, Mike, what specifically it was that was posted? Well, actually, other people had called it. I actually, I never read it, but apparently, one of these cast their own letters of people in our party accusing other people in our party. Of oh, I know. Thank you. The Mike. Uh, I remember what it was. Um, yeah, that letter had been sent to me, and then the person who originated the letter uh, was looking to me to do something about it. And so what I did is I, le I essentially leaked it. So, so in my brain, in my social media brain, I was treating it like a WikiLeaks leak. Um, and, then, and then I realized it was sort of obnoxious, and I think at some point I pulled it off of there. Um, but I, I have, I honestly have gotten some feedback on some of the things I've posted. Um, I know when, um, honestly, when um, the Green Shadow Cabinet was invented, um, I didn't know whether it was a real thing or not. And so I, I did some snarky commenting for a day or two on that, too. And so, so um, and then I, you know, I backed off of it. And then I realized that it actually was a real thing. And so, so, um, so I think I would just say, you know, uh, I know that sometimes we have an executive pause and sleep on things. And, yes. and, and with Twitter, um, what I like about it is sometimes when you do dumb confrontational stuff, it actually gets a lot of play. So, so part, part of it is attention gathering. Um, but sometimes you don't, you know, it, when, when you don't have a big budget, um, you know, you can throw a tantrum and do dumb attention things. Um, you know, I think Roseanne Barr was good at that. Not to bring up, um, I mean, part, part of that is that. Um, okay, and then in, in terms of justifying um, proportional representation, um, the, the top two person, oh, okay. the top two okay. the right before the PR is right. Well, I think top two, Doc is doing is the, the guys and girls with the most money are going to get top two likely. Um, and so, so I really see the economic problem with it. Um, but in general, I would just argue that it's better to have an open field and with proportional representation. Let the voters decide, and then don't have this arbitrary cutoff. I, I think the arbitrary cutoff of the top two is just way too high, and it's basically it, it seems to be an elitist construct. It's like we're we're only going to slice out the top two of this huge field, and it's solely based on either money or allegiance to corporate party. So, and <clears throat> what I've been told is that uh, the Republicans snuck it in at midnight or something. You know, that's how they got it passed the Now, how does that work exactly in a supposed democratic society? You know, how do you think it's not in the United the voters, and, and how do the voters support it? You know, um, that's what I really don't understand is why. Um, um, well, a valid concern I've seen is there are, there's a growing number of people that don't have party allegiance. And those people that are coming in, like IBM Network, uh, they're saying we're sick of parties. Uh, the good thing about top two is it lets everybody in that initial pool. 
extent, which that's true, except that still it's the rich guy wins. So, so we've got to figure out how to diffuse the problem with the rich person in the money. Um, or the, the party, uh, you know, the installed party person. Um, so, it, and that's one thing is like, my frame of, of the Green Party is I don't really see this as, a, as the third party, you know, because that just implies, oh, we'll just become the third of the, you know, triopoly, I guess, whatever you call it. Um, you know, we're something other than the third part. We're, we're like, we're like, the, you know, the replacement crews. We're supposed to be the replacement crew for the whole structure, I think. Um, so that, so that replacement crew would be the proportional representation. And, and if you have proportional representation in the party, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the spectrum that's included, that's folded in the process. So. Great, thank you. Um, just